Hey folks, I'm Colton Woods and I'm here with Teton and we're going to be walking you guys through some basic groundwork to do with your horses in preparation for the Liberty stuff. So all this works together. If you've watched our introduction to Liberty video, we've talked about mark training, groundwork, and our round pin work. Here we're covering the groundwork and it's going to be walking your horses through the basics of moving around you at a fairly close distance and a change of direction. So we're going to be looking at hind quarter control, shoulder control, and suppleness. Now this is strictly for your horses preparing for the Liberty stuff. This is not necessarily um, Groundwork 101. This is very specific to the Liberty horses. And so if you're running into certain problems like your horse isn't soft on the halter, you'll need to go and check out some other videos on how to get your horse soft on the halter in lateral flexion um, if you're running into those types of issues. But here, guys, I have a dressage whip, standard size dressage whip. Got my horse in the um, regular roll halter, soft roll halter. This is a 14 foot lead, but is by and far way long enough because my horse is going to be working in fairly close to me. Liberty work, your horses are more times than often, they're sensitized to what we want them to do. They need to be prompt, they need to be working alongside us, they need to be responsive. We over desensitize horses oftentimes have to be resensitized to what certain things mean. We found this through a bunch of our clinics. And so here, the reason I have a dressage whip or any of the whips in terms of the Liberty horses is strictly because it's an extension of my arm and an aid to communicate with my horses. We're not sitting here wailing on our horses and forcing them to do this. This is very much creating a regimented strategic training plan to build a foundation just like we would for a ridden horse, but for our horse that is going to eventually be able to confidently and relaxed, calmly work around you with a true understanding and respectfully and all that good stuff. So guys, the reason I have a dressage whip is strictly because it's the most effective tool to use as, a, as an extension of my arm. So with this, this, a lot of this work is very similar to some in hand work that you might find, but I'm gonna have my horse fairly short on the lead, about two foot, let's say here. And I've got my dressage whip and I'm going to be standing, I could be standing right in front of my horses here and I'll stand, I'll turn him to the side so you can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask my horse, I'm going to point the dressage whip to the outside of his shoulder. So I'll start actually on the other side so you guys can see. And I'm going to ask his shoulders to yield to the right and then I'm gonna have my belly button pointed towards the back of his shoulder and my shoulders are gonna stay open so that my horse can move around me, all right? Now, the number one trickiest part for a lot of people, keeping your feet still. Liberty work will be working on draw. So you might actually find that I would encourage you to draw your horses to you, to make a change of direction with your horse coming towards you. That is vastly different than a lot of our clinics where we have horses that will walk on top of people. And if you have a horse that is very pushy, I would not be encouraging to work on this. You need to have, make sure your horse respects your space, is respectful, understanding before you start inviting them into your space. But here, just like I said, guys, I'm gonna raise this whip towards his shoulder. I'm gonna start with it pointed down towards the ground. As I get closer, if I get within probably six to eight inches of him and he has not moved, I am going to tap him with it. And so that only after two or three times of having to tap him with it, then they will move off and they will actually move off of this very smoothly and you won't have to continually just crank on them like, but the, the process of that is that you have to be very calculated. You have to do the same thing every time. You need to start with the whip down in the dirt and move it towards them so that they can calculate it so they can calculate that you're predictable and that we're creating good training habits. So here I'm gonna raise the whip towards his shoulder. Perfect example. See, I didn't tap him that hard, but he wasn't quite paying attention. So you guys get to see that on a video. That's fine. It's, it's what happens. But here I'll, I'll drop the whip down, I'll stop my feet and I'll let him move around. So I'm sure plenty of you guys will have fun with that in the comments below, be respectful realize what, this, what the actual part of that thing was, is that the horse wasn't paying attention and I didn't wail on him. So here I'm gonna take the whip exactly again. So if your horse had that reaction, glad you got to see it. Take the whip down, I'm gonna raise it towards his shoulder and looky there, I didn't even have to touch him. 
So I've got him about two, two foot of lead. My belly button is pointed towards the back of his shoulder. I'm keeping this dressage whip pointed down because to me it's like the gas pedal. I only want to have to put as much gas on as I have to. And so here I'm going to try to stand still. And when I'm ready for him to stop, I'm going to drop my whip down to the down ground. I'm going to stop moving my feet. And ideally he would end up just out on the other side, exactly 180 degrees on the outside of my shoulder there. So again, if your horses start to get worried, say you do have to make contact like that, you do want to make sure you can just come over here and you can rub them and they're not getting freaked out by it. It's just that we are sensitizing our horses to this extension of our arm. So I'm going to raise it here against the shoulder. I almost had to touch him with it, but didn't have to, so that's pretty good. And so I'm looking for my horse to have a nice bend. I want my horse to actually be stepping up and engaging their core from their inside hind and that they're staying soft on the halter. Now here, I'm going to ask him to stop again. Ooh. There you go. Good job. Now, out of habit, a lot of us start on the left. That's perfectly fine. When you're working on individual sides, I say that it's fine to go ahead and have the whip, per se, if you're going to the right, have the whip in your right hand, or in your left hand, excuse me. But here, on this side, it's the exact same thing on him going to the left, but I'm gonna show you a change of direction. And one of the main things you will notice is that I don't actually change hands with the lead rope and the whip. When I go to change directions, the whip comes up underneath my horse's chin and actually helps them um, change direction by yielding their shoulders across. So I'm going to stand right in front of him, raise the whip towards his shoulders. I'd like for he, I let him hit the end of the halter. I didn't give slack to him. I just let him take the slack out of that lead and him come back forward because when I go to ask him to move his shoulders, I want him to step across in front with his shoulders and he's not backing out of it because we need draw and that's just something that this horse has a tendency to do if your horse does then you can use that as a little bit of an example going around so here looking for a nice cadence nice rhythm that he's not worried he can move relaxed around and slowly guys it's just like riding you're the smoothness of your changes of direction and your transitions are very dependent upon how smooth you are in asking your horses to do it so here i'm going to slowly and smoothly take my whip underneath his chin and ask for his shoulders to step over he just kind of got a little bit of a hang up there no big deal i'm not worried about it because well, all i what that shows me is i need to do it more often i need to go up underneath and back through now this is something that of course you would want to have checked your horses out on up underneath their chin you wouldn't want them to be so feral that they're striking at it or something like that don't go to whacking your horse in the chest that's a jerk move and stuff like that but here i'm gonna do the same thing up underneath his chin here he gets a little lost you can this horse is very very sensitive and which makes him a great liberty horse but sometimes he's a bit of a try hard and he gets to trying to do a bunch of different things and so you, that's all the more important that you keep things super quiet super relaxed let them sort through it when they don't figure it out don't take the pressure away but certainly don't add more pressure but and then when they do figure it out make sure you give them the release so I'm going to go underneath his chin. There, that was better. You can see how he took a better step. He did come towards me, which is fine in this Liberty work. I'm going to ask him to do, see if we can get the similar. So I'm going to, I just raise that whip towards his hip. Ooh. Drop the whip down a little bit. I start slowing my feet down. Ooh. Ooh. If he doesn't find the answer, I might pick up on the lead rope just a little bit because some speed is a motion guys if they get to going fast and going faster and faster you need to break it back down here underneath there that was better so i'll just drop my whip down and let him stop all right so that's what we're looking for there you guys like even though know, he's been through similar to this groundwork quite a bit um he has his own quirks about him so we get to work through those, but the biggest thing with this is keep it calm, keep it smooth, and you wanna be making sure that you can move those shoulders away from you, 
And if your horse is getting really bracy on you, I would focus more on the hind quarters just a little bit. I look at the horse's hind quarters. Now my belly button is pointed almost towards his tail. The whip goes more towards his hind quarters. And then I can open my shoulders back up for a circle to move around me. But pay particular attention to how my belly button is towards his shoulder and how my shoulders stay open, giving the horse somewhere to go. When I go to change the direction, my shoulders stay open, and then they, it's like a, do a revolving door moving around. They say, ooh. You're okay. Ooh. So here, if he wants to keep trotting, I might just ask him to trot a little bit more if he wants to keep trotting. And then you can even work on changes of direction at the trot. When you go to do your changes of direction at the trot, I'd step backwards and take the whip underneath. And the reason I say step back a little bit is because your horse is moving faster, which means that they're gonna already moving towards you at the walk. And when you go to do these changes of direction, they need more room. So you don't want them to learn to run you over and don't, you don't want to get run over anyway. So I'll step back, step there, and ask him to keep coming. So, Ooh. then just like the gas pedal, all the energy comes out. I stop my feet, the whip comes down, I take a big deep breath. He can take a big deep breath and he can lick and chew like he was and we'll go on. So that is the very, very basics of the groundwork. Now, in the next video, we're gonna be showing you guys how to do different changes of direction. But first things first, guys, they need to be soft in the halter. They need to be responsive and respectful and calm and confident in the whip asking when it asks them to move around you. And of course, you need to be able to do this walk, trot. We wouldn't expect our horses to canter on such a small circle, but making sure that when you do go to get your horses to cantering on, in respect to preparing for liberty work, make sure your horses are on a sizable circle and that they're actually in enough work to build the muscles that they need to be able to use to do this. Those can be very difficult um, circles, particularly if they're super small. So our horses need to be athletes when we ask them to do that. So we hope you guys enjoy this. Be sure to let us know if you have questions in the comments below or send us a message. Always glad to help you guys and hope this helps progress you guys on your journey to creating a nice connection with your liberty horses.